everyone. Welcome to this video on high performance computing for ANSYS Mechanical. This is part four of a multi-part series and the main focus of today's video is to help users understand how to accelerate their mechanical simulations using GPUs. And if you're new here, my name is Jeff Beisheim and I'm a senior principal R&D engineer at ANSYS. I have over 20 years of experience working on mechanical APDL product, focusing mostly on equation solvers and high performance computing. One of the questions I often get asked is, can I use GPUs to accelerate my mechanical simulations? And the shorter answer is yes, absolutely. The mechanical APDL product actually has a very long history of supporting various parallel programming models dating all the way back to 1990. Uh, ANSYS first introduced support for multiple CPUs many years before the OpenMP multi-threading became an official standard. And around the early 2000s, Mechanical APDL began to officially support distributed memory parallel, relying on MPI software to pass data between different CPUs. And in 2010, ANSYS first released support for accelerating mechanical simulations on NVIDIA GPU cards. At that time, Mechanical APDL was the first ANSYS product to commercially release support for using GPUs to accelerate its simulations. Some of the original design objectives of the GPU acceleration feature are listed on this slide. Now, we did not want this feature to be a niche capability that only supported a small percentage of customers who perform mechanical simulations. Instead, we wanted to support all of the mainline features, operating systems, and hardware platforms that our customers were currently using. We also didn't want to reduce precision or take any shortcuts that might compromise the high accuracy that ANSYS is known for. And hence, all the calculations that are accelerated via GPUs produce equivalent accuracy as compared to traditional computations on CPU cores. In terms of what GPUs are currently supported, the mechanical APDL product supports both NVIDIA GPUs and AMD GPU cards. Generally speaking, ANSYS recommends using high-end RTX graphics cards designed for workstations, which used to be called the Quadro line, or ANSYS recommends high-end data center cards like those which used to be called the Tesla series, such as the A100, H100. For AMD, ANSYS recommends the high-end Instinct line of cards. So we'll talk more about some of those hardware stats later in this presentation. But regarding software, the main equation solvers are both accelerated on GPUs. And both distributed and shared memory parallel and even hybrid parallel can be used with the GPU acceleration feature. And users can run their simulations on either a single GPU card or they can take advantage of multiple GPU cards. Now the program does not automatically detect the presence of a recommended GPU card and just automatically use it. So just having the card installed and working is not sufficient to use it in order to accelerate your mechanical simulations. In Workbench Mechanical, you must go to the Solve Process Settings dialog box and under Advanced Settings, you need to use the highlighted drop-down box to select either NVIDIA or AMD GPU hardware. And this will effectively tell the mechanical APDL program to check out the necessary HPC license, check for a valid GPU card, that it's installed and working, and then ultimately accelerate the solver calculations on the GPU device. If you're an MAPDL user, you would add the dash ACC command line option uh, to select using this feature. Now, when running mechanical simulations, customers have two main equation solvers to choose from, one direct method solver and one iterative method solver. Both of these solvers can take advantage of the available GPU hardware to accelerate their calculations. Additionally, when running modal or buckling analyses, various eigen solvers that are based on these equation solvers can also get accelerated by the GPU hardware. So block land shows, PCG land shows, unsymmetric, damp, subspace, and et cetera can all be accelerated by the use of GPUs. So another common question that I often get asked are what types of mechanical simulations can be run on GPUs? Now basically any mechanical simulation that uses the sparse direct solver or the PCG iterative solver can get accelerated. But in order to see significant speedups in your workflow, you wanna find models that spend a higher percentage of their time in those equation solvers. It's simply Amdell's law. If a simulation only spends 50% of its time in the equation solver that's accelerated on the GPU, and even if the GPU was infinitely fast, at most you would get a 2x speedup in your entire simulation. 
And GPUs are fast, but they're not infinitely fast. So to see significant speed ups, you're looking for models that take a long amount of time in those equation solvers. So what types of models involve that? Well, that's generally going to be 3D models with very refined meshes leading to high numbers of degrees of freedom. Also higher order elements or bulky, thicker geometries are all things that lead to denser FEA matrices. And these are things that are likely to put more of the simulation time into the equation solver and less time into the prep or post-processing work. So another common question that I often get asked are what types of GPU cards do you recommend to use to accelerate my mechanical simulations? And as I said before, we generally recommend high-end NVIDIA or AMD cards. The full recommended list is provided in the installation guide. There's a section on the GPUs recommended for mechanical APDL users. But in general, these are going to be cards that have a high double precision compute capability, cards that have higher amounts of memory on the GPU cards, cards that have lots of memory bandwidth, and also newer cards that support newer PCIe standards for transferring data from the CPU RAM onto the GPU memory. So this slide shows a table of various NVIDIA and AMD GPU cards and their variety of hardware statistics, things like memory capacity, memory bandwidth, how much double and single precision compute speeds, as well as an estimate of the cost. And you can see that GPU hardware varies quite a bit. So picking the right GPU makes a significant uh, important decision in determining how much acceleration that you are going to expect to achieve uh, with your mechanical simulations. So again, we're looking for cards that have higher memory capacity, higher memory bandwidth, and higher double precision compute as these are going to lead to more significant speedups. So I wanted to show a couple of slides highlighting the improved performance when accelerating on GPUs for your mechanical simulations. So it give you a sense of how much uh, speed up to expect. So again, it's going to depend on the GPU and CPU hardware involved. It's going to depend on the type of model that is used to accelerate. In this case, we're taking a bulky 3D model of an engine block, higher order solid elements, and in this case, when using a GPU, an H100 card from NVIDIA versus no GPU, we're able to get uh, almost a 9x speed up in the equation solver. So this slide shows the acceleration we can get using GPUs for our iterative solver. So here we ran a variety of benchmark models in our V23 benchmark package using the iterative solver on a machine that had four AMD MI210 cards. And you can see the significant speed up that's achieved in the PCG solver when using one, two, and four of those GPU cards. So hopefully you found this video to be useful and hopefully it answered some of your questions about whether or not mechanical simulations can be accelerated on GPUs and what types of models to expect to see significant speed ups on. And if you like this video, please let us know. And we'd definitely be interested in hearing your comments or feedback. And let us know if you have more questions about GPUs that you want to be answered or whether you've successfully used GPUs to speed up your work. We'd love to hear any such feedback and share any insights you might have learned along the way.